acceptance. All right, so Susan Audet here. Jacqueline Gardner here. Jamie Wagner here. D? Yes. Oh, name was called? <laughs> yeah, D Shabazz here. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, also like to announce that we will be recording this meeting and also pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A section 18. This meeting of the board of registrars um, is conducted via remote participation. Also announcing that Amber Martin will be taking minutes for this meeting today. Okay, so um, the first, first agenda item that we have is the election of a chair for this meeting only. Are there any motions, nominations? Yes, I nominate Jamie Wagner. I second that. Any other nominations? Oh, I'll, I'll third it. You're thirding it? <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like move along after the second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well then, since we've got a third, a second, um, uh, can we vote on Jamie Wagner being chair for today's meeting? Sure. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It's so voted that um, all in favor for Jamie Wagner being chair of this meeting today. Hopefully you're okay with that, Jamie. I think so. I <laughs> okay, might need good. to ask questions, but I'm good. I think it's not that, that's pretty straightforward, so. Okay. All right. So then right. I will, I will hand it off to you. Right. Well, thank you. Um, so I would say that I think kind of one of the first things that um, was brought up was I'm trying to pull up my um, my minutes and stuff since I'm sitting in my car, um, trying to take a vote on the public comment um, portion of the meeting. I think if we should allow public comment, if anyone has a motion for that. I move to allow public comment for the meeting. And I'll second it. All right, I uh, Madam Chair, with a second, we should vote. Okay. Madam vote. Chair, through you before you take a vote, um, I just wanted to address the issue of the meeting agenda. Um, a question has been raised as to whether there can be uh, public comment if public comment is not a specific agenda item. Um, in my opinion, it can be. Um, however, any such public comment would need to be limited to the items that are specifically listed on the agenda. Okay. Can I ask Can a guys? question? Why, why is that so? Who gets to decide uh, what's the limitation or what's the excesses of what those public comments should contain? Yes, through you, Madam Chair. Um, so the, the meeting order is controlled by the chair um, and it's the chair's responsibility to ensure that the discussion at the meeting is kept to the items that are identified in the meeting notice. In other circumstances where you list just general public comment on the meeting agenda, in those circumstances, public comment can be more broad. However, here, there was no indication that there would be general public <clears throat> comment. And therefore, while the chair in her discretion does have the ability to allow members of the public to comment, it has to be with respect to matters that are on the agenda, because that is those are the only matters that are properly in front of the board at this time. And I guess that would be up to the discretion of the chair and uh, the members of the board of registrars. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, that the it's it's up to the discretion of the chair. Um, she is the person who's responsible for keeping order at the meeting and determining who should speak and when. Yes, and, and with all due respect, Attorney Carbo, it is up to the discretion of the chair and it's up to, um, we can put it to a vote. That's not actually, when you say part of the agenda, it is part of the agenda, but it's up to the discretion of the chair. It's not a legal issue, in other words. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, it is a legal issue because the open meeting law states that you cannot discuss matters that are not part of a properly 
noticed meeting. And here, again, general public comment was not part of the meeting notice. Therefore, it's my opinion that it is a legal requirement that any public comment allowed be limited to the items that are on the agenda. So my understanding of the law, and I'm not an attorney, um, but in, in reading of it that um, there's the law does not block public comment. Through you, Madam Chair, I am not suggesting that the law blocks public <laughs> comment. What I'm saying is that that comment has to be related to the matters that are on the agenda. But that's part of your opinion. So the board is not discussing the matters if the public makes comment about it. That's that's not my understanding. We could simply decide to have public comment. As to the matters that are on the agenda, that's correct. I I just I'm I'm trying to understand what you're saying because we have no way of knowing what the public's comments will uh, contain. They that, all have a time correct. limit, right? So they all have a time limit. There is no public comment section of this meeting. And therefore, when the, when the board discusses the matters that are on the agenda, the chair in her discretion can recognize people to speak on those matters. This is a different circumstance than other circumstance in which you have listed public comment as a separate and specific agenda item. Okay, well, it's up to Madam Chair, but um, I believe the board has discretion to allow for public comment and the, the public has a right to speak. That's what we're here for, not to limit uh, public comment. I'm going to be a horrible chair so i'm sorry for you guys to you know go through all this but when i'm looking at the list of topics for today we have the election chair which we did the open meeting law complaint from miss carol gray and then the acknowledgement of the complaint like i'm not seeing and that's why i just want to start so i can clear it up i'm not seeing in my inbox the actual agenda for today i was going off of can somebody forward that to me so i can have an act, uh, Kai, like, I don't know where yes, I, it's not in my folder. So I'm sorry about that. I have all the minutes. That's okay. I, I'll find it for you. Sorry and, about that, guys. Yeah, no, no worries. I appreciate you again, taking on uh, the chair uh, role, Jamie. Um, but it is simply up to your discretion. Uh, Sue, just as a reminder, sent us uh, today um, that we could vote and whether to allow public comment. So I guess I think we should, my opinion is, is that we should uh, continue to have public comment. Hold on, I'm trying to find meeting minutes. I mean, um, agendas. <clears throat> yep, your agenda, I'm, gonna, I'm getting there. All right, guys, thank you. It's all right, yep, 524, here we go. Okay, it's on its way. Okay, I don't know why I, yeah, I don't know. I, I did send them, but that's okay. Yeah. It's probably there have been a lot of emails stuck in with one of them somewhere that I'm just not getting to it. There it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's exactly okay. That's what I was just saying. So, um, yeah, I don't know as far as, I mean, we voted on allowing the public comment and then I suppose we need to, do we need to vote again? If you know, or this is why I just, feel foolish not knowing really how to No, I think it's up to your way. discretion. It's up to your discretion, Madam Chair, whether we should have public comment um, and it should just be broadly stated public comment. There is um, a limitation on how long public comment should be. So there is that restriction that's already built in. So if I may speak. Um, yeah. We 
built in a limitation time-wise for the first two meetings, but we haven't really specifically stated whether there's a limitation for time on this meeting. It's been different each meeting. So that would be something to determine how long you would allow the public to speak for. So Jamie, in the uh, Q&A, uh, attorney John Boniface, who again is, he's not a signer on, he's just simply, you know, a, an attorney outside the auspices of the town. Uh, has written, the board has discretion to allow for general public comment. The fact that the board will not discuss matters not noticed in the agenda does not mean that the public is blocked from making general public comment. So looks to suggest that it's open. All right, well, I would say that, um, is that where we should start then with pub the public comment and go from there? Um, as far as that goes, I think, it's, is it Sean that's on here that kind of has to let people um, who want to raise their hand to speak? Yes. Actually speak? Yeah. yeah, that's correct. So anybody in the audience can raise their hand and then um, are you able to see the list of attendees, Jamie? Um, I have the list of attendees, yes, and I don't see anybody with a hand raised. Okay. So if people have comments they want to make. Yeah, for the one person who dialed in, just hold on one second, I can look up the code. I'm back in the office because my plan of hiding got waylaid, but um, <laughs> I'm going to sign into Sean from my computer just so I have that so I can use, like, I can see things better on my computer and not have to flip back and forth on my sure. phone. Yeah, and so for the one person who, who joined via telephone, the code is star nine if you'd like to raise your hand. All right, so I'm in with my computer now too. So I have, I can zip back and forth over there. I still don't see anybody with their hand raised. Yeah, so, at I what point do we so do we call it with uh, nobody wanting to speak? Do we give them a minute? I, yeah, it's up, up to you. I would say in the past few meetings, you had hands by at this point. So, mm -hmm. all right. So at this point, not seeing any hands, I guess I we can close the. She thought she public said, comment that's portion of the meeting. Said, when I move on to the yeah, acknowledgement of the complaint and review it and discuss it as the board. Are we going to go over the minutes first? Well, we had it in the order. We can do that. Doesn't matter really. Um, which order we do things in, Jamie? Well, that um, I'm just kind of was just reading off of. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. the, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just so, usually minutes are first before okay. it's kind of strange. But no. well, we can do. I'm just trying to look at the review. And, yeah. So we can, if you want to review, I'm clearly you can see that this is new to me because I'm 
<laughs> I know yeah. wing it as I go. And, and um, thank you for taking it on. Right. But I, I, I was just going the second for open meeting law complaint. Right. Miss Carol Gray dated May 14th, 2021. Acknowledgement of complaint. Review and discussion of complaint. So that was where I was headed next. Okay. So is that what we're going to do then the open meeting law or the minutes? Yeah. Well, I think we should do the open meeting law complaint because that's the second item on the agenda. Okay. So, um, All right. And then I'm going to pull that up on my computer now too. Sorry if I'm going to make everybody seasick looking back to my phone, my computer, my phone, my computer. Um, so is there any, does anybody have any discussion regarding that this is a different open meeting law complaint than the first one, if there's any discussion on that by the board? I well, think, go okay. ahead. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, well, I think that uh, number one, failure to create and maintain accurate minutes of the past three Board of Registrar's meeting. Um, we have 30 days in which to create minutes. So, and we've clearly created minutes. They are here before us all the past three meetings. So that one is moot. Oh, sure. Can I ask a question in regards sure. to that? And I, to be honest, I didn't look this up, but I was thinking about this. But would the, um, now since all of the, me the meetings are recorded on, on tape or so, so to speak, um, it's sort of like, well, I don't know, like augments the meetings or minutes or can they be, um, you know, interchanged or, or, or what is their role? In other words, that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, that's, that's an attorney probably, but, question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, may I answer? Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, through you. Um, so under the open meeting law, um, you are required to keep and maintain minutes of all your meetings, regardless of whether those meetings are recorded either by video or audio recording. Um, and the official record of your meeting is in the minutes. Okay. Um, and the, there is, at least as the law stands now, no um, specific obligation to either create such a video or, or maintain it in any particular way. But there are strict requirements for keeping minutes. So you do have to have a written record of your meeting, which is comprised of um, the date, time, and location of the meeting, the identity of the members present and absent, um, all votes taken, and a brief description of all of the items discussed. Okay, thank you, because I wasn't sure, you know, because of the COVID and stuff and, you know, video has been allowed and that kind of thing as far as where we stood, but thank you. <laughs> I, so point of discussion, uh, we were just sent uh, meeting minutes. So this isn't, her complaint is valid in the sense that the meeting minutes were not posted soon after. So all of the minutes have now been published together. So I wouldn't say she doesn't, uh, Attorney Carol Gray doesn't have a valid point. Madam Chair, through you, can I respond? Yes. Um, thank you. Um, the open meeting law, requires that your meeting minutes be created and approved within a reasonable period of time after a meeting. The regulations of the Attorney General clarify that that period of time is either within the next three meetings or 30 days, whichever is longer. So in this case, the first meeting occurred on April 21st. This is the third meeting after that. Therefore, you are still within the required time for creating and approving those minutes. Um, there is no requirement under the open meeting law or anywhere else that your minutes be kept on the town's website. Um, they are public record from the moment they are created, whether they are in, are in draft form or in final form. Um, and they do have to be disclosed to a requester upon request. However, posting them to the website is not a requirement of the open meeting law and therefore, um, it is not a violation to not have done so prior to today. So are we taking the open meeting law complaint point by point, Madam Chair? I think we can. 
you have other things that you bring up for that. So um, inadequate notice of items to be covered in the meeting. Um, again, I find uh, that part of the complaint valid. Um, I myself did not understand what was being sent out within the email. And I, again, have doubts that the public, and it is unfair to assume and put the onus on the public to try to decipher charter language um, about the posting for the meeting. It was not clear and it was not clearly stated. Um, Madam Chair, through you, that, that is not the subject of the discussion here today. That is a separate and previous open meeting law complaint that was fully discussed at a past meeting and is not part of the meeting notice for this meeting. The only open meeting law complaint that is before you is the one that is dated May 14th. And the first item on that is failure to create and maintain accurate minutes of the past three board of registrars meeting. Um, I recommend that you confine your discussion to the items raised in that May 14th complaint as anything else is not part of this meeting. So this is not the continuation that we had set forth about our previous discussion. We have never completed that discussion. Um, that is correct. This is not a continuation of any previous discussion. There's nothing in the meeting notice to suggest that it is. Oh, that's problematic. So if we continue on with this open meeting law complaint for now to work, continue working through this, is, is there any other comment on the failure to create and maintain accurate minutes of the past three board of registrars meetings? No, it's that just pretty much answered in that last one. Yeah, it just seems like it's a chicken and egg story because we are um, discussing this open meeting law complaint and we have not gone through the minutes and approved them. That And these are minutes that have just been issued. So. Um, it just seems uh, in reverse to me, but. Um... So I, I hear that, Dean. I think that's fair. So if we want to, do we want to just take a few minutes as the board to review the minutes of, that we were sent today and then discuss those when I guess just let me know when, when you're ready to discuss Jackie, Sue, Dee, and then we'll just take a minute and look at them. Yeah, I think that would be helpful. Fine with me and, J and Jamie. One thing, two things about the minutes. Number one, I apologize. We spelled your name wrong. We fixed it. You probably want to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, <laughs> you probably so, see that all the time. I'm used to it, so, but um, I should no. be correct. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. No, we, we caught it and fixed it. And um, secondly, um, there were, yeah, you know, we rushed to get these done. So after going back and reading them again for a few couple times we realized we've left some sections out which we'll discuss with you when we get to them so today um well you know there'll be revisions obviously and then i think we should get together again and and approve them final once those revisions have been made okay so okay. yeah thank you okay should we now do you guys want to go through like the may 10th meeting or you know in order the april 21st and may 7th and may 10th and discuss them individually or do you want to look at them all as a whole and then discuss them as a whole no i'd rather go through them uh by meeting so yeah. april 21st of course being the the first meeting i agree so why don't we start there and then when you're ready to discuss just let me know So under section, under point number two of the April 21st meeting, delegation of authority, um, there's no discussion talked about as to, as to what the motion was on. So I propose that right after that point, just above motion, that you we state that the assistant town clerk introduced the matter and asked for public com comment and there were no attendees and then the board then proceeded to a vote. Okay, hold up. What's yep? Um, 
So point number two, mm -hmm. it just goes right into motion and it's like, well, what's the motion on? So we should describe what the motion was on. So um, the assistant town clerk introduced the matter, asked for public comment. There were no attendees and the board then proceeded to a vote. Did they ask for public comment? That was so, pretty straightforward. Yeah, so, well, and I, I watched the tape and that's what, there is a contradiction because I wasn't there but in watching the, the short recording, um, it is confusing because it, uh, it's stating on the minutes, they voted three to zero unanimously in favor to delegate the authority and duties listed under the charter to the town clerk. This was a roll call vote. Um, and it looks like Amber Martin did not vote, so there was no formal roll call vote, and the vote was then it, it should be two to zero, not three to zero. So there's no record of Amber Martin within the meeting voting in the roll call vote. We'll have to go back and listen to it. Okay. Okay, so that's one, and that's a pretty serious contradiction uh, or discrepancy within uh, the minutes. Um, it does say, of course, Jacqueline Gardner move, seconded by Jamie Wagner, delegate the authority, um, but there was no motion made by Jacqueline Gar Garner within this, Gardner within this. And there was no second by Jamie Wagner. Again, there's this discrepancy. If you, it's only a two minute video. If you look at the video, those are contradictions. But I do recall it being, well, anyway, presented, but look at the tape again and see. Yeah, so you guys will have to, we'll have to look mm -hmm. at the tape again. Mm -hmm. So if I could make a motion to move that the video transcript of that meeting and the May, well, we'll get to the others because there are some different discrepancies I've seen in that. Um, but th that those, those videos be attached to the, the minutes. They actually already are. Okay, well, so what do we do about the discrepancies in terms of the minutes? I think we're gonna have to review the, the Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Madam Chair. I'm just jumping in there. <laughs> Go right ahead, Sue. Yeah, ahead. okay. I think we need to review the, the, the um, videos and then come back again and talk about it. Do we need a motion from D or anybody to put out there that we need to review or is it just something that like it's so, clerical we'll yeah. review them and do so them. i move i move to table the approval of the minutes for april 21st any seconds on that no not hearing any seconds do we need to take a vote or do we well we wouldn't need to vote because there's no second so yes, then i would say that we need to continue yes. talking about these because i guess we need to approve them or reject them um based on what we're hearing if that's if somebody could just guide me and tell me if that's the correct move to make so you're saying to approve them all at once is, I think that we were going through, I guess, is it, is it our job to approve? Because I know like through other meetings where we have our board meetings, we have to approve the minutes and then they go on file. With us not agreeing as a group to approve the minutes, we still, I guess, need to figure out why we're not approving them and review them. And then until we're all in agreement of, of where to go with them next. Yeah, I believe with Robert Rules of Order, you would, if I make a motion, we vote to, to table it, it doesn't mean that we're not, um, you know, we shouldn't approve inaccurate minutes, period, because your minutes have to be, have to have some uh, accuracy and, and agreed upon accuracy. So if they're inaccurate, uh, then we have to table it to make sure that the video matches the transcript and then vote on it at another time. Okay. 
sorry. Jacqueline, were you saying something? Sorry, you showed up and then I couldn't hear you. No. Perfect. All right, so you are all set. We'll see you on Thursday. All right, so, well, why don't we set these minutes aside and then why don't we yep. move on to the May 7th minutes and review those and then have discussion about those. Okay, Madam Chair, but yeah, we'll have to, um, we'll, we'll, we'll go have back to, to the table. table first. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're in discussion uh, for May 7th now. Yep, I think we want to review those. And okay. Discussion regarding those. All right. So from looking at that, and of course I was in that meeting as well. Um, the minutes read um, on the motion: Jamie Wagner moves, seconded by Jacqueline Gardner, to elect Susan Audette as chair for this meeting only. Demetria Shabazz voted to nominate herself. Um, what, what happened uh, is that Sue said the first thing on our agenda is the election of a chair and I'm happy to take that role, to take on that role. Um, so that's not an accurate uh, recording nor an accurate portrayal of what happened, okay? Yet, Dee, can I interject? When I was talking earlier, absolutely agree. Um, all of the discussion items before all of the motions were not included. So we do need to go back and rewatch the videos and get all of that information in there that pertains to both sets of minutes. Okay. And it's before every section of every motion, pretty much. So we have okay. to- yeah, okay, so. Yeah. Well, so then then it should, in a way, it should read if we just want to have a synopsis, you know, we need to move for the minutes to reflect that Sue Audette nominated herself to be chair, followed by uh, Demetria Shabazz nominating herself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that'll be- Madam included. Chair, can I um, just interject here for a second? Yes. Um, thank you, through you. Um, so. You know, with regard to these particular minutes, um, I've reviewed the draft, and it's my opinion that on their face they're they're incomplete because they do not include a description of any of the substantive discussions that took place, other than what happened during public comment. Um, and so, what I would suggest is that um, this matter be tabled, and that you know each of you can review the draft watch the, the recordings if, if you want to and come back at the next meeting with whatever changes or additions that you want to have um, to these minutes because um, you know you can go through each of the points in this meeting here now um, but either way it's my opinion that these are not ready to be voted on and are not likely to be ready um, as a result of this meeting. Well I agree with you through to the next <laughs> set of minutes as well. I agree with you, Attorney Carball, as I said earlier. <laughs> there you go. There's a first time for everything. Uh, first time for everything. <laughs> okay. Minutes so to decide. do we need a motion to just take all of the minutes? Or do you want to pull May 10th and look at those also? Or should we just make a motion to table all of the minutes until they're further reviewed and then bring them back to the next meeting? Dee, would you like to make that motion? So... I move, I, I move to table all of the minutes from April 21st, um, May 7th and May 10th um, for approval at next Board of Registrar's meeting. A second. All right, so let us take a vote. Um, a roll call vote, I think they're being called. So um, Jacqueline Gardner, what is your vote? I'm not going to vote on that one. So is that a no or do you abstain? I abstain. Okay. And Sue Adet? Yes, I approve. And D. Shabazz? Yes, I approve. All right. And Jamie Wagner? Yes, I approve. 
Um, all right, so we will table these minutes until they are, the videos are reviewed and edited and we will take them up at the next meeting. Um, now my question, I guess, to, um, I guess whoever can answer it now, we, as far as making um, suggestions or, or fixing errors that we find personally in the minutes, are we able to edit and send them in or do we need to not do anything? I don't want to violate any other sort of meeting laws by, you know, marking up a, a minute and then sending it through email. I just don't know what the, I find an error, whether it be my name spelled wrong or something that I found was omitted, but Dee didn't find that. I'm sure she'd love to see it and I'd love to see what she finds. How do we communicate that back and forth with one another? So Madam Chair, through you, what I would suggest is that um, you each, you know, provide your own markup of the minutes and send those over to Amber. Um, Amber can then um, circulate them to the group for discussion at the meeting. Um, so it's it's important to understand that um, once the the you know the markups are are given to Amber and then recirculated, you can't have a discussion back and forth over them over email. Um, so you know you can you can see those um, and then bring them to the meeting. The markups will be part of the the meeting record. And then at the meeting, you know, you can go through and you can say, okay, we'd like to, you know, accept this change in the first paragraph or not accept that change in the second paragraph or do something completely different altogether. Um, I think that would probably be the most expeditious way to handle it. Okay. And then do we need to set a timeline for this to take place or is that something we can discuss? I mean, do we need to say obviously by our next meeting, but it doesn't have to be so we don't violate any sort of timelines for when these minutes are supposed to be um, submitted to the public or just in general. Like I, I heard people say within three meetings or 30 days or, or whatever, but have it like, when do we need to have these um, done? Yes. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I, I would suggest setting a specific meeting date for two reasons. First, um, you're not a board that has a regular meeting schedule. Um, so by stating your next meeting, it is a bit vague. Um, secondly, um, as I indicated, you are required to approve minutes within three meetings or 30 days, whichever occurs last. As to the April 21st meeting, um, that deadline will have passed if you don't approve those minutes today. Um, so I would suggest that you, you at least um, set this matter down for further consideration prior to June 7th, um, which would be the 30 days from the second set of minutes, um, and that you, you try to approve everything there. All right, that sounds good. Um, so we will figure that out further. Um, now moving on to back to topic two, the open meeting law complaint uh, by Ms. Carol Gray dated May 14th, 2021. Um, I guess we can, I could take a few minutes to review the new open meeting law complaint that or is in front of us and um, then discuss it. Does anybody need more time to review it or has everybody kind of reviewed it? So if you could, for uh, the matter of the public, uh, just restate her complaint since she filed two complaints, I think it would add clarity. Okay. You want me to start with, all right. So let me pull it out because there's a lot of So this new complaint, um, the date of the alleged violation is May 7th and May 10th. Um, she starts off by saying see attached. Um, and her first point is that there's a failure to create and maintain accurate minutes of the past three board of registrars meetings. Um, and I think, Sue, do you want to address it again? I think you had meant when we started talking about this, do you want to go into this a little bit more? Uh, yes, sure. Um, well, we have created them. Um, and as was stated a couple of times, now we've done it within the 30 days that we're required. So it seems like that's, that's a non-issue. But they're you know, not approved. So. They're not approved, but they're created in any form is, is acceptable. Okay. Yeah. 
That's all I have to say on Just that. For, for my knowledge, when were these posted on the town's website just out of curiosity they're not posted jamie we have yet. no okay. requirement we haven't post. approved them and, and probably wouldn't approve do it until they're approved anyways right right exactly okay all right so then um moving on to our second part of the complaint was there was a failure to create and approve minutes in a timely manner so i think i don't know sue you could speak to that again too if that goes along with it does similar to the last because the only difference is in a timely manner and we already spoke to that and lastly the third portion is violation of the open meeting law by attorney goldberg and others for having discussion about the may 4th open meeting law complaint during the board's may 7th meeting even though it was not on the agenda for that meeting which kind of piques my curiosity as we've been being encouraged to do the same thing at this meeting. Now, are we in violation of the open meeting law because we've been discussing things that aren't or because we voted and approved it that it's okay? If that, I don't know if that makes sense or not. So can I try to offer some clarity? Uh, what's being referenced are the um, minutes prior to the meeting officially starting on the recording on that day, there is a discussion, a recorded documented discussion between attorney Goldberg and clerk Audet. So it's a discussion that is occurring and um, that is part of attorney Carol Gray's complaint. I'd that like is valid. To, yeah, I'd like to, well, I'd like to ask um, Attorney Corbo if you would mind addressing that. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, may I respond? Yes, please. Okay, thank you, and through you. Um, so first of all, that was not what my reading of this complaint was about. Um, to, to the contrary, um, it, was, it was raised by um, board member Shabazz to um, discuss the open meeting law complaint during that meeting um, because it was referenced in a letter um, that was received by the board the day before the meeting. Um, and I am prepared to um, support the board's discussions in that respect. Um, to the extent that the complaint is alleging that a discussion that occurred between attorney Goldberg and clerk or debt that occurred prior to the meeting um, and a portion of which was was recorded um, and broadcast to the public um, is my opinion that that does not implicate the open meeting law. Um, the open meeting law applies to discussions amongst a quorum of a public body with respect to matters within the jurisdiction of that body. Um, the open meeting law does not apply to discussions between individual board members and other individuals who are not members of that board, even if the, that other individual um, is employed or contracted to work for the town. Um, so in this matter, you had an individual board member, clerk or debt, speaking with a non-member, um, town attorney, Lauren Goldberg, um, that simply just does not raise any issue under the open meeting law. The open meeting law does not apply to those discussions. Um, the only way that the open meeting law could apply to a discussion like that would be if a quorum of the board were participating in the discussion. And since that did not occur, um, and frankly, since no one party to that is discussion even knew that anyone else could hear it, um, it does not, in my opinion, raise any issue under the open meeting law. And just, I mean, I'm looking at this, maybe I'm, I just printed it again, so I had everything, but in the open meeting, in her complaint, I'm on page three under that section three, I'm not even seeing any of that. Am I missing a page on mine or where is that stuff referenced? Because I'm basically just seeing um, when Carol Gray is, you know, mentioning, you know, times 1139 a.m. So it's not even, this stuff isn't even listed, the stuff 
the discussion prior to the meeting. So I don't know if I'm, I'm missing something or if I'm just not reading that and what I have. I didn't see that either, Madam Chair. So I am looking for that so I can get the exact wording because indeed there was a meeting occurring before the meeting and it was um, that would have been a violation from my understanding. Okay, so not seeing that in, in this section of it, can should we have discussion regarding those three items within this open meeting on complaint? Um, seeing how that is what is on the agenda to do. Um, as far as what it's asking us to acknowledge, acknowledgement of complaint, um, obviously by us having it on the agenda, I would assume that is an acknowledgement of the complaint. Um, we've all reviewed it and just discussed the three different sections. Um, I'm not sure as far as how to, to, you know, if we need more discussion regarding what's within this complaint or, um, what we would need to, to vote on. I still guess I'm lost. And as a chair, I guess I shouldn't be, but I just don't know what we, what we vote on with these. I mean, it's here, it's in front of us. It is what right. it is. What, so, you know, what are we voting on with that? Well, um, voting chair, may I violation. address the board? Yes, thank you. Um, thank you. So um, one, once an open meeting law complaint is filed with a public body, um, the public body is required to review the complaint and respond within 14 business days. Um, that response can either be um, voting to adopt some resolution of the complaint um, or explaining to the Office of the Attorney General why um, you do not believe that there is a violation um, or some combination of the two. Um, what typically happens is that at a meeting like this, the board will, will vote to um, acknowledge receipt of the complaint and authorize someone to respond on its behalf. Um, typically that is the town attorney. Um, however, it could be some other um, official if you so choose. Um, what then happens is that um, a response is sent simultaneously to the office of the attorney general and the complainant. Um, the complainant then has an opportunity to inform the office of the attorney general as to whether or not they agree um, with the position taken by the board. And if they don't, then the attorney general will conduct an investigation and issue a ruling. Um, so in, in this instance, um, with respect to the three matters that have been raised, um, as to the first two matters regarding the timely creation and approval of minutes, um, I, I would have to agree that you did not meet the timeliness requirement for the approval of the April 21st meeting um, because they were not approved within three meetings or 30 days. However, um, in order to cure such a violation, um, the board can create and approve the minutes. And so my, my suggestion for resolving that portion of the complaint is for the board to um, schedule a meeting at its, at its earliest convenience to approve those minutes. Um, as I previously discussed, there is no violation at this point with respect to the May 7th or May 10th meetings, provided that you create and approve those meetings um, within 30 days of those two respective dates. Um, so before I go on and address the, um, the final matter, um, do you have any questions? So I, I do, I, you know, because this is the first time that I've seen minutes and so my question to uh, Sue Audette, have we had posting of minutes prior to this? And am I just missing this information or knowledge as, as a board of registrar? So um, as you know, we've had town clerks coming and going before my time. The prior town clerk did do a set of minutes, but she did not have them approved. So no, you have not seen minutes in your tenure as a board of registrar. Okay, so part of the open meeting law uh, complaint is that we have uh, some type of training. Mm -hmm. 
And, um, you know, if the boards never created or posted minutes before, might we agree to a training uh, with an outside uh, source or resource, not KP law? I think we need to do more than that. I think we need to um, establish what the board's position is with the town of Amherst and what your duties are. We were talking about, I think, in our very first meeting. Absolutely. Okay. There's a few things on the list. So yes, we need to we need to discuss what we can do. Not you know at a, at a separate meeting. What we need to um, put forward in order to clarify. Basically, you know, yeah. Yeah, because you know, with the discrepancy, what your duties are right, right. Because with the discrepancy in the meet and the the meeting minutes for April twenty first, there is no recorded deliberation, and so part of the open meeting law complaint is that you know there's an assumption that there must have been some type of deliver deliberation for the uh, clerk and the two board of registrars to come to a conclusion uh, so quickly um, about the signatures and about you know, voting to uh, invest the clerk with the power of approval for, for the uh, signature. So you know, that, needs, that needs to be cleared up and training, hopefully, perhaps, will help in that regard and so that final point within the open meeting law complaint that attorney Gray uh, poses is mixed up with, you know, this not being uh, fully fleshed out and defined. I mean, there was no, it's a two minute recorded meeting and there was no deliberation prior to that. That's Okay, well, we're not talking about that, you know, and you do get the open meeting law guide and that's what everyone gets when they join a board or committee. There yeah. isn't any formal training for anybody else. Um, they just get the open meeting law guide, but I think it would be helpful if we discussed what's in there, if we discussed what the board of registrar's duties are. Um, so is Sue, Sue, is Amber on this? I, I haven't looked at the- She's taking minutes. Yeah. Okay. So- could Amber clear up? Uh, was there some discussion prior to this meeting? Was there some explanation uh, at all? I would be Anything? happy to. And I think it'd be best to hear from uh, Jacqueline and Jamie as well. It was um, cut and dry. It was black and white. It was one sentence. And I think Jacqueline and Jamie can both attest that there were no deliberation. There was, there was no discussion about anything prior to the meeting. And it's simple as that. Jacqueline, would you be able to reiterate that like you have in the past? And Jamie, you as well. Okay. Um, again, there were no deliberations. And the way I see it, is and maybe it's me and the type on how my mind works is when I saw those um, citations of the law, I looked up the citations of the law, familiarized myself with them. I also did a little bit of research and I got that CMR uh, 950. And that's how I came to my conclusion as far as like there are already laws that are in place. I can't vote a law out. So if, if the things are already there, they're there. And the same thing as far as like, when I entered, I got an appointment of committee handbook. I read this, I read all the materials that were given to me. And that's how I sort of like shaped my um, job description, if you want to call it that. Okay, so it was taken on faith about the signatures is, is all I'm asking. It's in CMI 950 and I can get, and I think it's 5502, it's mm -hmm. in there. And again, you, as far as like the laws, yes, you have the, the, the Amherst Charter, you got the state's laws, you got federal laws, you got so many laws and it's like, they all sort of like impact one another. Mm -hmm. And that's what I kind of did. I did my little research on other things as far as like how it impact me as a board member. Mm -hmm. But that's just how I, exactly. I kinda, that's just how I kind of operate. Mm -hmm. And Jamie, how about you? Did we have any deliberations prior to, after the meeting? No, there was nothing in the email threads. I mean, they're all out there for everybody. Everything went around. It's pretty cut and dry. It was, I looked at it as like a kind of a housekeeping, I guess, so to speak, kind of thing. It just, it made sense to take that avenue uh, with what the town 
clerk's office was suggesting and has it, always done it was just for me there was no question there was there was nothing to discuss it was a um what was, so that there was and oh, that's why there was no discussion because there, was, there, was there wasn't anything to discuss. to discuss there was nothing to discuss so nothing there about the signatures. there was about, nothing to discuss no. And then again, you know, as far as like, and I think that people made the mistaken notions as far as this was about petitions. It wasn't about petitions. It was about the whole ball of wax. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were voting on, whether or not, you know, to me, it was like an awareness thing. And then also to have reviewed some of the content of these things. Have we done that? That was my sort of like understanding of the situation. Thank you for addressing that, both of you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you for clearing it up. Um, that's that's all. If that's what occurred within two minutes, and no one questioned uh, the signatures. And again, I, I, that that spelled out. Sorry, Madam Chair, <laughs> but um, but the signatures again are spelled out in in the, as far as I like get the approvals in that CM mm -hmm. CRMR uh, nine hundred and fifty or whatever it was. It's addressed in there, and that's like I said, these things that sort of like go hand in hand in. And we should be up on these things as far as like how this board operates. Mm -hmm. And again, also you got an appointment uh, uh, committee book. And again, I read all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, you know, and I'm not so looking part of the, the so part of the I I yeah, okay. you know okay. I, I I'm never uh, phased <laughs> by anything like that. I'm just I am a, a person that definitely. Um, you know, for the sake of transparency and democracy, always, you know, mm -hmm. am interested in protecting uh, yeah. the voter. And, and I am too. Right. And that's so why yes, I like to know I, the law. I know so that. that I'm, I know that law. Law. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I just um, interrupt for a second here? Um, at least according to my screen, it does not look like the chair is in the meeting any longer. Yes. Um, oh, if that's go. the case, can we um, take a moment and see if we can get her back? Okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you for pointing that out. She should be back. Uh, looks like she disconnected, oh. and she should. Um, she's back now, but she does not appear to have audio or video. I'm sure she's working on it. <laughs> uh. So, and I is she there? Not yet. Okay, well, I'll wait to for my my last question regarding that. And it's it's really about the the, the last thing within uh, attorney Carol Gray's complaint. But I think it would be very helpful for us to meet and just put down this is this is what the and give you a historical perspective of what's happened in the past with the Board of Registrar's I'm involvement sorry, with our office. So that, can, can we just yes. wait for the to okay. make sure that, that we've got everyone on the meeting? Yeah. I was just reiterating something that was already said. That's I wasn't okay. going to go anywhere new. <laughs> yeah. According to the chat, she says she got kicked out. Yeah. I'm guessing you can probably hear us, Jamie, but your audio is not, well, maybe you can't hear us if your audio is not connected, but you, you don't have a microphone. Um, Do we want to answer her and tell her that we're waiting for her to try to reconnect in the chat? Can someone send her a text or an email and see if she's with us? I can do that. Um, 
Oh, excuse me. I just got an email from Jamie and she says, oh. I can't get a new link. The old one is not letting her in. Oh. Sean, can you do anything about that? Did, did everybody get that? Oh yeah, yeah. I think everybody should have gotten it. But Jamie, if you if you could give me a call at four one three, I don't know if you can hear me actually. So, um, Jackie, I, you oh wait, she has another connection here. Hold on one second. Do you want me to email her? Oh, I oh, think uh, she She's may be back. Now. All right, I'm back. Oh, hey, hey. So, so I don't have any idea what just happened. Um, Sorry. So, so Jamie, we were uh, finishing the discussion about part three and of the complaint. And so I just wanted to um, ask, you know, the, 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 the emails themselves uh, for April 20, prior to April 21st meeting, are considered part of the conversation or discussion um, and amount to a deliberation. So when Amber Martin uh, put into one of the emails that we were going to discuss the petition and then retracted that, that was still, isn't that still considered part of the discussion from my understanding? So that would amount to some level of deliberation. I just think that needs to be stated, you know, whether there's agreement on that or not, that amounts to some level of deliberation prior to the two minute conversation that is recorded. Oh, yes. About I know. I mean, as far as from my standpoint, I once it was retracted, I guess it wasn't in my head when we were having the meeting. So I'm not sure. Um, if, I don't know. I can't speak for for Jacqueline on that spot, but I, I it wasn't in my head when we were having the meeting. So I I don't know that I would have to get clarification as to whether or not that would have to be considered something that should be in the minutes or not. Because the, the only, oh, may I speak? Um, okay. The only deliberations I had were the ones inside my head when I was reading. Those are the only deliberations I had. Okay. So, but there's a, there, since there's a cross email and uh, communication across um, the different emails, I, you know, if we were to make a motion, and I'd be happy to make one, that those emails, be considered part of the deliberation that took place prior to the 10, the two minute recorded conversation, that there was indeed some level of deliberation. Can I speak? Mm -hmm. So the emails, they um, had to do with the agenda item. And as far as I'm concerned, sending emails out, which I've been doing, you have to talk about what you're going to be speaking about at the meeting, how else would you discuss what your agenda items are going to be? That's not considered deliberation in my book. Is it, are we, am I talking about something different than what you're talking about? I well, mean, she was just clarifying an, email, an agenda item in her emails. Right, so what constitutes deliberation? Um, the open meeting law defines deliberation as an oral or written communication through any medium, including electronic mail, between or among a quorum of a public body or any public business within its jurisdiction. So I'm taking this off of um, the, the state, you know, website, what, what is considered uh, deliberation. And I'm looking at deliberation and electronic communication, which is from the state website for public bodies and um, a public body, may distribute reports or documents to be discussed at a meeting, provided that no opinion of a member of the public body is expressed. So the fact that an email went out to talk about what was going to be discussed is not a deliberation. 
that's my take. Attorney Corbo, do you have a, am I wrong? Uh, thank you through Madam Chair, may I answer? Yes. Um, under the open meeting law, the definition of deliberation excludes communications um, relating to the distribution of a meeting agenda, scheduling information, or distribution of other procedural meeting, um, or the distribution of reports or documents that may be discussed at a meeting, provided that no opinion of a member is expressed. So while um, these particular emails are, are not in front of us today, um, nor are their subject matter, um, it does not appear that those emails would have constituted a deliberation if you were discussing the agenda, as it appears you were. So the emails were, I, I guess, from what I saw and, and what uh, I read were more than scheduling. Um, and it, it, the agenda was confusing. And we are indeed discussing the third item, which is part of the deliberation. So. Madam Chair, through you, um, again, I think we're conflating two different open meeting law complaints. Um, the third item on the complaint in front of you relates to the discussion that occurred um, during the May 7th meeting. Um, it did not relate to any emails that may have occurred prior to the April 21st meeting. Would it help if I asked um, that we put this up on the screen? I can send it over to Sean. Would anybody want that? I think it'd probably be a good idea just for the participants to see if they haven't already. Okay, so let's see. Give me a few minutes here. Attorney Corbo White, Sue does that. Do you have, um, as far as the third, you know, the three meeting rule and 30 day rule, whichever is latter. So 30 days from April 21st, are they business days or is it just 30 calendar days? Uh, it's calendar days. But we're there. So we're waiting for Sean to post. No, you're waiting for me. I have to find it. Oh. Give me a few minutes. <laughs> Yeah. And then you'll be waiting for me. Yeah. <laughs> this isn't as easy as it looks. Let's see here. Because I have so many folders and files, I have to find it. Okay, let's see. That one was on May 14th. Here we go. No, that's not it. Here it goes. Okay, let's see. Let's put it on my desktop. I have too many windows open here. I can't find my desktop. Um, there we go. Um, okay. There we go. Okay. It's coming at you, Sean.
Um, page three, Sean. Okay. Page yeah. three, you said? Yep, last page. Good right there. Nope, keep going. Sorry. Page, um, actually, it's not really page three. That's it's page six. Okay. The ones with the numbers. <laughs> I see. Yep, there we go. Then, That's the one. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So this is item number three, where there was discussion of, um, there was discussion going on prior to the official meeting. And so it was a violation of the open meeting law because that discussion was taking place and it was being recorded. So there's an actual document. <laughs> uh, Showing I think she just, that there's she a violation. Has, and she just has referenced here. She doesn't have that specifically referenced here, though. It looks like it's something that's happening within the meeting that she's referencing here, as far as I'm reading it. And I might be, again, missing something, but I'm just not so seeing that before the meeting. There is a recording. And um, since Sean is, is on this and he's doing the technical part of this, um that i remember clearly um after watching the video because i came on uh after you all were already on um that there's a video where attorney goldberg is advising sue adet about particular folks including me prior to the official meeting. So, so there was I'm a meeting. I'm not reading that about There was a here. meeting, but there was a meeting going on before the meeting. Oh. So here, despite, so in the middle of the paragraph, despite this, attorney Goldberg continued to advise the board during that meeting that her thoughts about how the open meeting law complaint should or should not be handled. Um, so no, that is different. Oh, may I? Jamie, may I uh, speak? Go ahead. I Go remember ahead. though getting an email, but I can't find it right now. But as far as like, there was a little a snippet as far as like prior to the meeting. And I think that that's what they're referring to. Yeah, I did get like that a pre, It was like a pre-meeting. Uh, right. And I think we, I got that link also too yeah. when I watched it, but I don't, I just don't, I can't pull out of this where that is what she's. Okay. Making I think the complaint about yeah, but I think that's what she was um, complaining about. Yeah, definitely. We yeah. I definitely yeah. saw that link that mm -hmm. was sent around, um, mm -hmm. but I just not seeing. I'm not. I'm not pulling that out of this section three. Mm -hmm. But I have a feeling that's what she's mixing mixing it up with. Ma Madam Chair, can I address the board? Go right ahead. Thank you, uh, and through you. Um, so we can only address what's, what's in the complaint in front of us. And th there's nothing in this complaint that I see that relates to or alleges that there was a, a meeting of the board occurring before the meeting. As I said earlier, there's nothing in the open meeting law that prevents one member of a board um, from speaking to some other person who is not a member um, about board business or any other matter. Rather, um, the way that I see this complaint is that it relates to the um, open session portion of the meeting um, in which there was some discussion regarding the open meeting law complaint. Um, and as you may recall, um, board member Shabas made a motion at the beginning of that meeting um, to allow John Bonifaz to address the board regarding the subject matter of his letter which had been received 
um, the day prior to the meeting. Um, and in that letter, um, he was addressing the issue of the open meeting law complaint that had been filed and that was anticipated to be discussed during the May 7th meeting. Um, at various points during the meeting, um, there were references to that open meeting law complaint and whether the discussion on the merits of the appeal and the objection um, should be postponed until after the open meeting law complaint had been discussed and decided. Um, and there was discussion about that from attorney, attorney Goldberg, as well as all the members um, and members of the public as well. Um, and the way I read this allegation is that um, the board should not have been discussing that open meeting law complaint because it was not part of the meeting agenda. Um, however, um, as was specifically noted um, by member Shabazz in making her motion, um, the reason it came up was because of the letter that was received the day before. Um, and she even specifically stated that it could not have been anticipated that such a letter would be received. Um, so under the open meeting law, while you are limited to discussing matters that are on your agenda, once an agenda is posted, you are able to discuss matters that could not have been reasonably anticipated um, at the time that the meeting was posted 48 hours in advance. Um, you are also able to discuss matters that are um, related to or part of the discussion that was um, noticed. So in this case, there was a discussion of the appeal and objection to the failure to certify signatures for the voter veto petition submitted on um, April 20th, 2021. Um, you did, although you discussed the open meeting law complaint, it was entirely within the context of whether you should be discussing that appeal or whether you should be waiting. And therefore, um, it's my opinion that by discussing that meeting that was really just tangential to the primary purpose of the meeting, that there was no violation of the open meeting law. Yeah, respectfully, attorney, I don't think that's what number three is about. I do think number three is about that snippet, and we should all watch it, of the meeting that occurred before the meeting. So that I don't see anything in this that refers to that at all. I that's what I'm seeing. That's how where? I'm reading it. Can you can you read where it says that? That is how I'm reading. Let me get to it because I was trying to, it's not even reflected that little snippet's not reflected in the meeting minutes, which um, is probably well, because it wasn't part of the meeting. Uh, right. <laughs> that, exactly. Yeah. Um, there, but the attorney Goldberg is advising the town clerk and it's not part of the meeting. That's that's the problem. Yeah, and the before. town clerk has every right to receive that advice. Nothing new. I, I'm also, sorry. It's new to me for, for advice to take place before the official meeting and to have uh, a discussion like that. It, it is a violation of open meeting. And I, that's it's what not I a think violation of the open meeting law is referring to. The here. forum did not participate. Right. There was no uh, forum of the board members. Oh, may I? It, it's, it was a, a meeting there that. Were two, there were two there and then the town clerk. We weren't, I wasn't on when that prior to when that first call was happening, when there were the t discussion before I, I hadn't either. logged on yet at that. The only time I had seen it was when it was oh, that video that was sent to us, but I wasn't logged on at that point either. I wasn't logged on either. Right. But the, oh, it is okay. a, it, it's an email that from Cal Gray on uh, May the 10th, the little snippet, that's where it is. Right. So I think we need to watch it for clarity. But it was a pre-meeting type of thing. Right, it right. Which, which so it doesn't problem, need, it doesn't yeah. Open, open meeting law, it's just that the, the mic and thing were set up before. before so, was, so KP Law was acting, was acting on behalf of, uh, was, was counseling the town clerk prior to the meeting. That's our job. We're the town attorney. She's a town official. Also, D, also D, I was asking for some advice in case I happen to be elected chair because I'm not 
um, very experienced with being the chair of a border committee. So I was just really getting protocol on how does the meeting run? I had my Robert's Rules of Order out as well. And I just wanted to make sure I follow things by the book. Hmm. That was part of the okay. discussion. There's a bit more in that, but. Attorney Corbo, as far as, so we're looking at the open meeting law complaint that um, Carol Gray submitted that is dated May 14th, she signed. Um, as far as the violations that you see, you agreed that there was a violation with number two, the failure to create and approve minutes in a timely manner regarding the April 21st meeting. Um, but as far as other um, violations within what is like put right here, you don't see any other issues? Um that is correct, Madam Chair. The, the only issue is with respect to not approving the April 21st meeting minutes in a timely fashion, um, which I suggest that, that you can cure that violation by approving those minutes as soon as possible. Um, and uh, if the board is so inclined, you know, by agreeing to undergo um, training or review of the open meeting law. Um, otherwise, I do not see any violation of the open meeting law alleged here um, and I would suggest that you um, entertain a motion to acknowledge receipt of the complaint and to authorize the town attorney to respond on behalf of the board. And as far as the response goes, um, I mean, we should discuss that because like you said, we wanna mm -hmm. acknowledge um, that we will approve, um, discuss and approve those April 21st minutes because we do, I guess I'll agree that there are some things that we wanna to add or change in those. Um, and then the training, um, will we get to review the response um, or will we discuss and let you know what we want within the response before that? Um, so that's that's up to you. We can um, put together the response and then um, send it to each of you um, and discuss it at a meeting. I'm just looking at the um, calendar here. Um, so you'd send it to us for approval. Is that what you're suggesting, Attorney that's, Carlo? That's correct. Okay. Um, so we have, to, we have to submit our response within 14 business days unless the Attorney General gives us an, an extension. Um, so the 14 business days would be So we would have to have a response in by June 4th. All right, and as far as the April 21st minutes, um, we need to work on getting those discussed and approved. So can we, should we try to talk about another meeting time now for those or um, should we do the motion to acknowledge the complaint um, or would the board feel more comfortable knowing that we have a meeting in place for the, the talking about the April 21st minutes. So, I'd like to get Madam chair, what I, what I would suggest is that you do try to come up with a, with a date at which we can both um, have the discussion of approval of the minutes and approval of the response. Um, and so perhaps, you know, you can look at, at dates, um, you know, such as June 1st or 2nd. I'm free on the 2nd. Or in the afternoon of the 1st as well as too. So I'm free either day, 1st or 2nd. Yeah, the first, I think, would, you know, as soon as possible would be prepped. Right. Okay, I'm good with so, that. So, um, as the chair, sh can I make a motion or should it come from somebody else? We should make a motion. Okay, so I don't know if if Dee or Jackie you want or Sue make a motion um, as far as acknowledging this open meeting complaint and then the remedies at hand. 
Is that what we should be going for? So don't we have to vote to um, accept the open meeting law complaint or to um, refute it? Or are we tabling it for another meeting, the June 1st meeting? I think if you, well, this will be clarify. I think if you make the emotion, I mean, we're, we'll definitely acknowledge it. We agree that there is um, stuff that needs to be addressed within it, like those April 21st minutes. Um, but I don't know beyond that um, what Attorney what, Corbell what would, has for insight. What, what I would suggest, Madam Chair, is that, yes, that you table it until your June 1st meeting. Um, between now and then, I will provide you all with a draft of the response um, so you can see it. And then at the June 1st meeting, um, you can you know, approve amend or amend that response or do something else. Okay. And so, do we need to vote on tabling it or make a motion to table it? Before we do that, can I um, make a motion to um, make sure that all of these minutes from the previous meetings be attached for clarity to this meeting? Which meetings are you talking about? So April 21st, May 4th, and or May 7th, and- Oh, they already are, they already are D. Okay, just wanna make sure. Okay, they were, so. they were put online this morning, actually. As drafts? Yep. Okay. They have to stay in that form until we approve them. Mm -hmm. So I move that we uh, table this discussion and the vote on the open meeting law um, complaint sent by attorney Carol Gray until the June 1st meeting. I second. All right, let us take a vote. So the motion by D, seconded by Sue. Um, Jack, you would you like to vote? I'll vote in favor of that too. Uh, Sue, for good measure, you just give a vote too. Yes, I approve. All right, D. I approve as well. All in favor. Right. And Jamie I... Wagner, I approve. Okay. So for June first, um, what time is the afternoon? Is two o'clock good with everyone? Uh, one one o'clock would be better for me if possible, but yeah, two o'clock if that's all we can do. Yeah. Attorney Corbo, how, how does your schedule look? I can do one or two, doesn't matter. Either one? Mm -hmm. I well, I can, I can move lunches around and I can do one o'clock if that works better for her. Yeah, it's just I have a meeting further and later that day. Okay, why don't we say, well, Jamie, I'm sorry, I'm jumping in. Yeah. <laughs> one is fine. No, I'll say, so we'll say June 1st at 1 p.m. We will reconvene to further discuss to discuss the open meeting law complaint and to approve the 421 meeting minutes. Yes. Are you going to approve all three sets of meeting minutes? Actually, our, good question. Can we go for it? Yes. Let's give us yes. enough time. Well, I would As far, so I'm would just worried these. that... Oh. Oh, go ahead, Attorney Carlo. I, I would suggest that you at least do the May 7th um, so that you can have those done within 30 days. So as to kind of avoid what happened at the beginning of this meeting, what do we need to have or be prepared for the next meeting so that we can approve those minutes? Is there stuff that will go around? I know um, there needs to be additions. So these edits we have to have, should we have them to town hall by a certain date so we're not all submitting stuff on you know may 31st to try to get it in for the june 1st meeting or how yeah, should we actually, handle that may 31st is a holiday so that's memorial day um right yep um so, can you have them in to us by the um 28th Friday. that'll give you guys enough time in town hall to do what you need to just circulate them to all of us is there any sort of time constraints on how it's not doesn't have to be 48 hours to us or any that kind of stuff is this simply no it's just it giving it back it to you. well 
Okay. So can we make it by just so you four or five? What's the the time timeline on the twenty eighth? Yeah, by four um, or five o'clock. Yeah, not five o'clock. Um, let's say actually let's say twelve noon on the twenty eighth. Okay. That gives us well. That gives you a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and half a day Friday. <sighs> because then we have to take that. That's to have your changes to us. And then we have to change. Yep. Yep. And that, you know, we're not here Monday, so. Well, through you, Madam Chair, just to be clear, um, you're not going to incorporate any of those changes at this point. Um, yep. So basically Amber's just gonna, going to collect whatever changes any of the other members wish to make and then include them in a meeting packet so that they can be discussed in person at the meeting on June 1st. Yep. And with Amber still here, I mean, I, I, I mean, I have a mountain of paperwork on my desk that I'm just buried all the time under. I don't want her to get buried under stuff and have to be time crunched. I mean, can we ask for Thursday the 27th by noon so she's given more time to actually yeah, make I the can't. changes and I'm send them around? Yeah, I'm teaching and <laughs> I can't, that's why I'm like, okay, whatever's the latest I could get. So 12 noon okay. on Friday. Okay, as long as Amber thinks that's a realistic time. I guess you just, you just Amber's do it, Amber's right? still here, Amber's right? Still yeah, huh? yeah, Amber, how do you? Yes, I am, I'm here. Yep, so yep, yeah, that, that's fine. Okay. Good. Actually, Amber's off that day, it'll be me. Yeah. <laughs> so no, basically that's, I'm just collecting everything from you guys right. and then I'm going to send it all back it's out again. Disgusting. So that's fine. Yep. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. So send it to town clerk at amherstma.gov. Okay. All right. All right. So there's no further discussion. Can we um, move to adjourn this meeting? So I move to adjourn this meeting. Second that. Well, Anybody uh, else want to go? Everyone? Sue, to Sue or Jackie has to second it. Right. Oh, second go ahead, it. Jackie. There I'll, you go. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Are you all in favor? Day. Bye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Have great, a great job. Week. Great job, Jamie. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and you get to do it uh, for the next meeting because you've been elected for this one. Because it's a continuation. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.